That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? I'm referring to the conversation on The Breakfast Club between a caller who stated that she was blind and the two um, hosts of the show, Envy and Charlemagne. Okay. Now, on this show, I will be providing you with excerpts from the conversations which I had between uh, several guests. Zephyrin, who is a comedian, Nicole from Rose Colored Rose Color Glasses, Kenyatta from It's Kenyatta, and a guest who is cited so we're going to get her viewpoint now the topic of the breakfast club uh, that they had that day was entitled getting it off your chest now um, my guests are going to be uh, expounding on this particular topic providing their viewpoint and later i'll give you mine now as a disclaimer today's show is only to provide the opinions of my guests and is no way lobbying for you to pick sides so with that out of the way, remember, for new viewers, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And for returning viewers, thanks for supporting the Parker Daniels Show. Now, let's jump into the video and see what caused this whole situation. So right. today we are going to talk about the fact that this YouTube video was put out. Um, it affected a lot of people. There were a lot of comments made um, from the sighted community as well as the blind community that were very hateful, very distasteful. And we are here today to kind of set the record straight. Getting ready for school. Uh, actually, I'm in college. I know you guys probably think I'm like nine. Yes, you, you, you sound, sound like, like you're nine, Chelsea. You sound like the second coming of each other. Because my friends and I were all you know, blind or vision impaired, and it seems like nobody wants to hire us because, you know, all everyone, it, all of these parents, they want, you know, kids, uh, they want us, it's a babysitter. Well, well, Chelsea? Kids to, like, parks and stuff instead of sitting in, in the houses and, and watching movies and playing games and stuff like that. Like, Chelsea? It's so freaking annoying. Chelsea, I'm not going front. You're blind. I wouldn't want you to walk my kids around the city and do things it's with them. Right. You're right. blind. Now, whether she knew what she was getting into or not, we don't know. But we know that the Breakfast Club was not having any of that. They went in on her at the jump, even though she called in to convey what was bothering her, what was on her mind, and probably was bothering her for some time. I don't think that the Breakfast Club was the right place to call in. But Nevertheless, let's continue with the clip and uh, let's check out and see what Kenyatta had to say. How do you say. all feel about this video? Well, I'll go first, okay? All right, so this is Kenyatta. And when I initially saw the video, I was extremely pissed off for the reason that they clowned the young lady rather than asking her questions. Uh, then watching it again, I kind of leaned up because I realized that the young lady had an opportunity to advocate for herself and to express her qualifications as a blind person to take care of children. Um, overall, I think that opportunities was missed. Um, and I think the way that the host behaved was poorly. And if it was any other community, acted that way. So that's how I feel about the situation. Here's what Kenyatta was referring to. You're blind. You people, do you realize that like there's actually, um, what's his name? A uh, blind person that are all famous and, and you guys like look up to them, like Who? like Ray Charles and stuff. Yeah, but Ray Charles ain't, and, um, Ray Charles ain't walking my kids. kids around the city. Ray Charles was playing the you piano and entertaining us. Whatever. I think they both missed the, 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 the point because the caller pointed out, um, you know, the fact that Ray Charles was uh, a blind or she just brought up his name 
and uh, the host they uh, also missed the boat too because they felt or they seem to feel that blind people are only put on this earth to entertain so again I think they both missed the point so anyway moving on let's see what comedian see no evil has to say about this particular topic let's like check it if out if someone more intelligent would have called um, in to do what she did it would have probably gone better but it just didn't seem like she was confident in her, herself she was you know she had the little baby voice and she sounded more like she was whining and I mean the conversation that I had earlier is that if you're gonna call the breakfast club you have to expect <laughs> that they're gonna make jokes they, that's what they do and they obviously they don't understand um, the blind community um, I feel like they had a point but they got it across wrong you know saying that leaving your young child with the blind person there has to be a certain age and you know depending on who the person is to your family and how well you know them and how well you know your child they know your child really plays a part in it so the, that that entire um, segment was just wrong it was just it was just totally it, it came out of left field and it went back out through right field it didn't even come off so. here's what was said on the breakfast right, I'm, 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 I'm a compromise with you at a certain age young kids I don't think no so. way 11 12 mm, 13 maybe yeah young kids though nah. no I wouldn't know I just wouldn't not my 11 month old not my four year old no well thank you Chelsea <laughs> whatever bye, bye. Now, I kind of agree a little bit with what, what they're saying because you know people are very very um, you know skeptical about having anyone watch their their one month old child or child or toddler or whatever but someone that's older maybe 11 12 as they mentioned 13 uh, I think it's, it'll be much easier if a blind person you know would watch or babysit them because that person could sort of help them out whenever they need something that requires, you know, vision or whatever. But someone that's that's smaller and you really don't know that particular child, you know, a lot of people are kind of uh, skeptical about allowing you to, to babysit, you know, their, their one month old, two month old, three month old, somebody along those lines. So I kind of understand what, what they're saying, although I've babysat before and, um, you know, these were people that knew me and what have, what have you. So let's continue with the uh, video and check out the next clip. Now, both of my guests had disagreed on the direction of the show. Take a listen. I think even in that case, even though it was made to be a fun moment, that was an opportunity for them to say, well, what is it about being blind and unemployed that you're having a problem with? They could have gone easily. That's, that's not what that segment was for. <laughs> that's not okay. what that segment right. was for. I agree with uh, Comedian See No Evil in that I don't think that the topic, which was getting it off your chest, dictated the time for them to be educated, even though the opportunity was there and it was missed according to uh, what Kenyatta stated. Now, not only was the opportunity missed, but they did something which I really didn't think that made sense at all was when they compared um, babysitting, which is what she was talking about, to Uber driving. Check out what I'm talking about. Well, wait a minute. No, let's be let's be for real. Now, now listen. Now we're gonna be for real here. Would Uber hire you to drive a car? No. I didn't want to drive no car. Which one would you come out and let you walk around with my kids? Yeah. No. No. Now, in this clip, Nicole even. Uh, got into the discussion and brought up something that kind of reminded me how uh, my friends used to do me back then when I mentioned certain words like watch even though I'm totally blind now though that though they were probably joking I don't think that the people um, on the breakfast club was joking I really think they were serious about what was stated I'm gonna play you Nicole's clip then I'm gonna play exactly the clip from the breakfast club and you make your decision Check it out. Blind people, sighted people, purple people, whatever color person you are, the, the point of the matter is, no, you're right. Everyone is right here. She was not very articulate. 
However, mm. she was nervous. Um, you're not always going to know what to say and say, know what to do or know how to act when you are put on the spot. And the young lady was only 20 years old. Um, she was taken aback on how they went at her. And, but instead of, you know, sitting down and getting to know or getting to understand what she was saying, they went on and off topic, just started ragging her about watch, using words like watch, look, see. Just because you're blind does not mean that you still cannot use the word watch, see, look, okay? That is part of the human language. So no, she was not very articulate. She was taken off guard. The things that they said to her, uh, well, would you drive Uber? Hold up. She never said anything about driving anything. She said employment, period, end of story. Whether she babysat, whether she went, you know, doing office work, whether she wanted to um, dog walk, whatever. You, they, they took it too far. Blind people can do almost anything that everybody else can do. Uh-huh, except for watch our people's kids. When now, I'm not even following that up because you're the one who said watch people's kids <laughs> but as a blind person. Think about that. But they, you should have said babysit. <laughs> and for, you know what? You can't do that. Like, no, you, you, say, you listen, Chelsea. You said blind people can't watch other people's kids. <laughs> you are right. Okay, all right, Chelsea. Listen, we're supposed we we could. We're no. really in the no. Things are getting a bit spicy, as we say in Louisiana, because Nicole pointed out something that transpired the next day, and um, she was very, very upset about it check out this clip the next day they did an interview on was it malik yoga yeah, and uh -huh. another person from the transgender community they took the mm -hmm. time to ask them questions to get to know yeah. more about that situation but you would not take the time to ask a blind or visually impaired individual more about what they you know how their lifestyle is so my okay. thing is, you're more interested in that. However, mm -hmm. you're not interested in educating yourself what about what blind people do and what they can do not. Now, when my sighted guest responded, this is what she said. Check it out. Even with looking at the different outlets and saying, okay, how do I interact with the blind person? That's another common misconception because Google cannot tell you, okay, well, this blind person acts like this and this blind person acts like that. Because anybody that you know that knows Anthony, they will say, oh, okay, well, yeah, plenty of people ask me if he's even blind because that's a real thing. Like, not it's not a certain way that blind people act to me because upon meeting him, like, you would be questioning, are you really blind for real? Like, that's a real thing. And then Nicole responded with this. There are people in this world who do not act, you know, look blind, who do not care of themselves, who ain't waving the head side to side, who are not rocking, Baby. because they may have lost their vision later on in life. However, you're not going to know unless you start up that dialogue. But for people to keep throwing that stereotype out there, and people in that type of platform, people are perpetuating that on a daily basis. So next time you see a blind person, first thing you're gonna think, oh, well, wait, they have mental problems, or wait, oh, they can't see me anyway, or, you know, I, I'll just do the good eye slide and walk past them and not even recognize that they're here. Okay, then how are you supposed to learn if you don't ask questions? Now, some of that is true, but the caller herself did uh, perpetuate uh, something that I feel was kind of stereotypical as well. And a lot of sighted people tend to do this too when they mention or when uh, someone brings up the name blind the first persons that come to mind is stevie wonder and ray charles you, you people do you realize that like there's actually um what's his name uh blind person that are all famous and and you guys like look up to them like, like ray charles. so we still have a lot to learn ourselves but check this out kenyatta asked a real good question Listen to what she said. Here's a question I have for all of you, right? 
Do you think we as blind people should be doing more to combat stereotypes or educating um, sighted people about who we are and what we're capable of doing? Now, after all that, I'm gonna leave you all with now. Some people want to, you know, blame just the, the Breakfast Club, you know, as being uh, irresponsible. But I feel that responsibility spreads across the board, and that's just my opinion. But uh, let's listen to my guests and see what they have to say, and also l they're gonna mention what transpired the day after. The Check it out. Part of this is that what you all have missed was after they put up. The the, mm -hmm. the Breakfast Club video. Then right. they put out a tweet that said, uh -huh. "Would you let a blind person watch your child?" Right. Now, oh, they, oh, they did. That? Now, yes. Wow. Now we took it a little bit too far. Ha ha, joke over. Right. Now the tweets that were put out there by sighted people. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to you, Nene, but no. I wouldn't let no blind person watch my child. Exactly. No, they were mm -hmm. very crude, disrespectful, wrong. That's just because they opened the door for it. They opened the door for it. Well, not only did they open the door for it, but they walked right on in it and just allowed themselves and everyone else to run with it. See, that's the problem like I have with these type of platforms. You're here to entertain, but also you have a responsibility as that person with the microphone there was a time when you had the microphone on a radio and you had to be responsible with it it didn't matter if you educated or entertained or excuse me entertain people or not you had the op the opportunity to be responsible and they failed they opened the door walked through it and just said, you know, the hell with it. Let's run it as a joke. They took it too far by taking it to Twitter and allowing other nignogs to sit up there and make fun of a whole community that didn't deserve that to all of us, right? It's more than just attacking the breakfast. It's more than just attacking the breakfast club. It really speaks to blindness and employment, blindness and being understand, understanding, blindness and equality. Y'all, we have to really think about this in a wider scope of the, the, the of that all. It, who are we as a blind community? What do we represent? What is it that we're actually looking for? What do we want to happen? See, these are the things that has to be talked about, but yet nobody wants to really deal with that issue. It's a cancer and, and, and how they deal with it is by making us or how we are choosing to deal with it is by keeping ourselves invisible. So it's not about the Breakfast Club. It's not about uh, the sighted people. It's about us. What are okay. we going to do about it? What steps are we going to take to become more visible in this society to make uh, our presence known? That's honestly, what it's about. Honestly, I okay. thought we were further than, than before this show. I actually thought we were further in progress than that there was those ignorant statements so that show kind of took me back and especially especially for them to put that that um that up on their twitter about would you let a blind person watch your kid that 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 you know it's that, like they, they just they just hit an all-time low with i really hope you all enjoyed this segment and enjoyed what i was trying to convey it wasn't an easy task and uh, as I mentioned in, in the earlier clips, we have a lot to uh, do in the blind community. But this episode with the Breakfast Club only opened our quote unquote eyes to show us this. And to show us that the only ones that are going to do and educate those are us. So let's.